Does everyone have their phones on them? Yes. Okay, good. We're all right. In case of emergency, we have a system. The system is there's no emergency exit. Oh, um, right there. Kick down the door. All right. So here's the if they're in the case of emergency, exit that way. That my that's my door. Y'all go that way. I go that way. He's gonna make this. Yeah. 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 Like, I'm, I'm, I'm the celebrity. celebrity. Right. He's a you can fly. Well, thank you guys for staying. Everyone else has abandoned this con. What? There's no one left. This, this is the last survivors. This is like the end of the zombie movie. And this is all we have left of our crew. Yeah. yeah. Everybody else. Okay. Everybody else failed because their weapons were just gardening tools. See, you, should, you can't you can't go in un, unprepared, right? You at least need a bow and arrow, but even that's impractical. Crossbow, I mean crossbow. Crossbow is good, but then you know you run out of arrows. What are you going to do? Keep making arrows all day? Yeah. It's better to have a sword. Or an a, axe. An sword. axe. Like a nail bat. Baseball bat. A, a steel bat would be good. Yeah. First, yeah. put some bricks in it. Or just okay. a, or just a car that has nails on the front. Just random. them. Yeah, but that's going to run out of gas. Just just buy gas. Huh? Solar powered. Solar powered car. They don't have enough power though. What about night? Yeah. Haven't you seen the movies? It's always dark when there's zombies. That's right. It's like it just turns dark when zombies walk in for some reason. Yeah, the, it's, you always have cloud cover from zombies for some reason. It's like I think they just give off a stench or something, or they just release some sort of pheromone that creates these clouds that cover up the environment. Maybe it's just their farts. Yeah, welcome to uh, Zombie Theory. Um, we'll be talking about <laughs> zombies and uh, how they apply to anime in real life. He told me to copy Matt Bat. Yeah, this guy's leaving. He's like, I don't want to hear anything about zombies. God. He's like, I came here talking about. I, they scare me. I don't want to hear about this. Okay, bye. <laughs> he wanted to do anime. Well, guys, um, if you don't know, I'm Sunny Straight. I'm the voice of Krillin, Bardock, the original Toonami Tom. Uh, let's see. Usopp, Maze Hughes, um, Drossel Kynes from Black Butler, uh, Mizuzu from Oron High School, uh, a million characters. I'm also a comic book artist. I've been published uh, by DC Comics and also uh, Dark Horse Comics and Tokyo Pop. Um, so this is a basic Q&A thing. And so what you do is you just ask questions and I'll answer them. You could be run the gamut of how to get into comics or how to get into voice acting. I've also been a writer and director at Funimation as well. I directed Yuri on Ice and uh, I, I directed the original Dragon Ball series too. So yeah, I've been doing this for about 20 years, a little over 20 years now. So you just ask a question, I'll give an answer. But here's the thing. If you don't ask a question, what happens is everybody in the room has to ask a question. Like I start with her. She asks a question, then he does it, and then everybody has to ask a question. So if you feel bad for shy people, you will raise your hand and ask a question. <laughs> now. <clears throat> yes. All right. So, great. My mind just went empty. What was your favorite uh, voice? Same one. What was your favorite voice to do in any anime? Oh, I don't know. Usually it's the one I'm doing now, whatever I'm doing. I got a really fun time doing Bardock in the movie just recently. But I think if I'm overall, I'd have to say Koro Sensei from Assassination Classroom was my absolute favorite to do. Yeah. yeah. That was, it's closest to me in personality and also closest to me in voice. So whatever you can do, that's what Chris Sabat, the voice of Vegeta, calls a coffee drinking role. It's like you just take a sip of coffee, talk your, your regular voice, and then take another sip of coffee. Uh, whereas, you know, Krillin has that weird uh, voice like this, and he screams a lot, and then Usopp is like that voice with a hitch in it. It's like, uh, ah, hi, how are you? You know, so that's just painful. Uh, but Koro Sensei was like, it was like me, but a little bit higher, about in this range. Hi, everybody, how's it going, you know? Which is also my base use voice, so it's very easy as well. Uh, so does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Yes, All right, who has another question? Yes. How did you get into voice acting? Uh, like most people, I slept with Chris Abbott. <laughs> I'm, just I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. How did you do that? I mean, I did, but it had nothing to do with getting the part. Um, 
No, um, I auditioned. I was doing a lot of theater in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and uh, I had been doing theater for 14 years before I got on Dragon Ball Z. So if you want to be a voice actor, get on stage. Our best uh, actors come from theater. And uh, Funimation had uh, open auditions for Dragon Ball Z, and I thought I'd give it a shot, and I landed the role of Krillin. And after I got Krillin, Cartoon Network really liked what I did with Krillin and asked me to audition for Toonami Tom. And when I got Toonami Tom, I realized I kind of stumbled onto a career. Because at the time, I was more focused on being a comic book artist, you know? Uh, I had had several books published by that time, but uh, once I started getting a lot of roles on this, I went, wow, I could actually make a living doing this, you know, which is hard to make a living at doing comic books. Any other questions? Yes. Opinion on furries. <laughs> Opinion on furries. Um, I don't have any problem with furries. I love furries. I don't, I'm not a furry, but I might be and in my deepest, darkest fantasies, I might be. Because when I was a little kid, I saw a Robin Hood, uh, the Disney version, where he's the fox, and I wanted to grow up to be that fox. I wanted to look like him, I wanted to be Robin Hood, and I wanted to be that. So maybe there's a furry inside all of us. <laughs> oh, no. Don't quote me on that, man. <laughs> Sunny Straight, there's a furry in all of us. Inside every decent, moral, upstanding human being, there's a furry just waiting to get out. <laughs> oh, I'm down here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, run while you can. All right. Uh, any other questions about furries? No. Okay. What is it? No, no furries. No furries. Beards? <laughs> well, we can have a panel on that later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. So I was late, so this might already been asked. Mm -hmm. But uh, yesterday in Eric's panel. Mm -hmm. He said that he does not watch the the shows that he has characters in. Mm -hmm. In Red and Elise's panel just now, yeah. they said that they do. So yeah. where do you stand on that? Um, a little of both sides. Some of them I haven't seen. I try to watch most of them. What I really try to do, though, if I'm on a show that ha has a manga, and all of them have mangas, but a, a show that has many series, I'll go back and read the manga. Because when you read manga, you get a voice in your head of how the characters should sound, and that sort of helps dictate the way you should do it. As a matter of fact, I read the manga, when I first got cast as Krillin, I went and read the manga of Dragon Ball, and um, the voice I had in my head was not the voice I was using that they cast me for, because originally uh, it was done in Canada by Ocean Group for the first season, and uh, the first Krillin sounded like this. Hey, everybody, wait up, hi! And um, they just Canadian, so they had to say it after everything. But hey, <laughs> so I got cast because I could mock him the best. Um, but I really didn't like that voice, and neither did the director. And so the first day I'm recording, the director, a uh, good old boy from Texas, just like all of us in here. Who's from Texas? Raise your hand. Yeehaw! Uh, he said, uh, yeah, that voice sounds just like Terry Clausen's voice, but I hate that voice. I was like, oh. Crap, he's gonna he's gonna replace me. I'm like, well, dude, I can do other voices. He goes, yeah, I know. That's why I cast you. You know, it's like, uh, you know, Krillin's a little person, but he's like, a, he's the world's strongest human being. And I was like, okay. And I'd already had this voice in my head that sounded like Popeye on helium. <laughs> and I said, what about Popeye on helium? And he goes, what would that sound like? I'm, I don't know, something like this. Come on, guys, let's go. And he went, yeah, yeah, yeah. Use that. So uh, I got to be the first uh, American cast member to do the voice exactly the way I wanted to do it um, because everyone else had to try to sound like the original Canadian cast. But by the second season, especially toward the middle and the end of it, all, all of us had changed our voices to be what we wanted them to be. You know, I was just fortunate enough that the director couldn't stand Terry Clausen's voice. <laughs> Uh, any other questions? Does that, I guess, that is your question? Yeah. So I, and I've, I've watched a lot because I've directed a lot too. So you have to watch the one you direct. But yeah, I try to watch it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to be like um, uh, what Johnny Depp goes. I never watch the films on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he, ended, he ended up directing one of those uh, pirates movies, and I was like. I could see you haven't watched these movies because you suck as a director. <laughs> All right, uh, any other questions? 
Yes. Do you watch any of the Team Four Stars Rivalry? What is that? So, oh. <laughs> Team Four Star, they make a I know what it is. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, uh, I think the Krillin own count is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. But I have said this before many times. If I was doing the uh, uh, parody of Dragon Ball Z, I would go a lot further than they go. I mean, day one, you would see nothing but bathroom stalls and the legs of the Dragon Ball Z fighters underneath, and you'd just hear, Gah! from behind the bathroom stalls, like a hair would pop up like blonde, and you know, someone's going Super Saiyan from, and then you'd hear the toilets flush, and it would say, Dragon Ball Z abridged, episode one. We'd start there and go downhill, is what I'm saying. Come over, I'm making that a lot reality. Yeah, I, I do it all the time because I'm in my fifties. So. <laughs> <laughs> I go Super Saiyan. You should add a restaurant sometime. Yeah, <laughs> over nine thousand. Don't go in that bathroom; it's over nine thousand. <laughs> all right. Uh, any other questions about fecal matter? No. Okay. Um, any other questions at all? Yes. 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 Don't be Spoiler. giving any spoilers. Spoiler warning. A lot of people haven't seen it. You know what though? I, I feel like at this time, if you haven't seen it, sorry. Well, <laughs> it's been a real weird. Whisper your question. I'll see if I can answer it. I don't want to spoil the movie for people because it's a really good movie. If you haven't seen it, leave now. Leave the room. <laughs> okay, we can answer that question because that's already known okay. from the previews. You can tell. Yeah, they have redone Bardock. He's a different kind of Bardock. He's a kinder, kinder, gentler Bardock. Um, but uh, I say this, and I'm not going to give away anything by saying this. But um, did you guys ever play the video games, the Dragon Ball video games? Budokai Three. Yeah, and. Bardock has been in a lot of these video games, and over and over he says, I'm going to change the future, right? Well, he did. <laughs> We're in the future now, and it's different. It's a different time. Oh. Yeah, he actually gets sort of the uh, the lifestyle he always wanted to have, you know, that he regretted that he didn't have in the, in the uh, original movie. So, in a way, that makes Bardock the most powerful Saiyan of all, because not only can he affect change in their world, he affect change in our world. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's deep. Thank you. Yes. Um, you made a point before about the Krillin's looking more prominent Why does he sound very close to Usopp? Why does he sound close to Usopp? Yeah. That was just There's chance. Really, really, it was just chance because I told you how I came up with the voice for Krillin, right? Yeah. I was Krillin for years before I became Usopp. It just so happens that the Seiyu for the Japanese Seiyu for Usopp has a voice very similar to my Krillin voice, just by chance. So I was able to easily sound like that because I was sounding like that for Krillin all the time, right? And the cool thing about it was is that we weren't cast by Funimation. We were cast by Oda, the creator of One Piece, uh, and his crew. They Because they didn't like what happened with four kids, you know? And so they said, we want to cast it. So they told Funimation to do like five to ten choices for them to choose from and so i was mixed in with a bunch of other people that were in the running for uh usa and oda said he likes that one best so it's the one part that if you don't like the way i do it i say i don't care because the creator of the series said that's what i hear in my head when i when i'm doing this so you can't get any better than that right right yeah Rarely. Usually the parts that I, I auditioned for, I got, that I really wanted. Um, with the exception of maybe one show that was Sergeant Frog, I really wanted a main role on that, and I didn't get one on that one. But um, I really wanted Krillin. I really wanted Usopp. I really wanted uh, Apachai from Kenichi. Um, you guys seen that? Yeah. That was cool because, you know, the original, in the Japanese, I took a risk because the Japanese... Yeah, everything he says is up here every time. You know, he's, ah, bah, 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 hello, are you? Ah, bah, bah. And I went, mm. 
It'd be funnier though if he talked down here. And Abba was like a nervous tick or something. So I'm like, Muay Thai is the art of man killing. Abba! You know, and I go into that. <laughs> and I did that for the audition. I thought, well, I'm taking a risk here because, you know, that's not like what the Japanese do. We always try to go close to the Japanese. But Monica Rial was the director of that. And she went, ooh, that's interesting. So she let me do it. And it, people, a lot of people say it's their favorite role that I do. So. Uh, yes. All right. So what's your opinion on being President Mike of My Hero Academia? Because I honestly think you do that voice really well and it's not appreciated enough. Well, I'm not him anymore, though. You're not? No, I was just him for the first and second season. I had to quit because, I mean, the regular voice is something like this, right? Uh, actually, I was mocking this guy in, uh, he's from California. He's a radio show uh, talk host named, uh, what's his name? Uh, Tom Likas. And he's this misogynistic butthole. But <laughs> I thought his voice would be really good for that. And it was great for the first season. But in the second season, President Mike starts screaming everything, right? And for some reason, I mean, I scream as Usopp all the time without any problem. But for some reason, screaming in this voice uh, caused me to get laryngitis. And then it turned into pneumonia. And um, I told uh, Colleen, the director, I said, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And at the time, I was directing at Funimation. And I said, well, why don't I try directing myself? That way I can take my time with it, just sort of space it out over a week instead of just one day. But even then, as soon as I did two lines, I could feel it hurting again. And I said, I can't do it. It was the first time I ever dropped out of a character. Wow. Um, so I went to the, the next runner up, which was Dave Trosco. So he's now the voice of it. I didn't notice any change. Like... He's pretty good. Yeah. And he's younger. He can take the damage. <laughs> <laughs> Sacrifice. Let's make his throat yeah. dirtier. Yeah. He, he, he might be limiting his roles next year after doing it for so long. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Okay. Um, you said President Mike really hurt. Like, was that the hardest character? That was the hardest character and the voice. Usopp being second. Uh, but with Usopp, I can do him for about two or three hours, but then I have to shut up the next day and not say a word. And then, and then, like, if they're if they have a lot of Usopp lines for me, they'll book me one day, skip a day, and then come back in the next day. But uh, yeah, those those are the, well. Also, Rag, uh, was Ragnarok from Solar Year. That was a tough voice too. Do you remember, do you remember that? Because it starts off with this screaming sword, and then he ends up being this little you know, like he's this demon thing for a while, right? And then he ends up being this cute little chibi version of himself that sounds like Krillin. And when I first got cast in that, I was like, wow, I don't usually get to play these you know badass demon characters, right? And uh, but when I got when he got to the point where he transformed into this little Krillin chibi thing. I said, "Is that why you cast me?" And he goes, "Yeah, I thought you knew that." I went, "Oh man, I thought you saw something different in me." You know, it's like, "Yeah, he could play a demon." No, I just wanted for that Krillin part. Uh, any other questions? He wants to ask a question, or what's his question? It's not a question. It's a statement. What's your statement? You have an all might limit. An all might limit? Yeah. Yeah, I can have I can have it for about two episodes. <laughs> It's about all the all I can say. I get what you're saying, though. Any other questions? Yes? No. I mean, except Sergeant Frog. You know, that's the only one. All the other ones I, I got. But, I, you know, I don't do a lot of auditioning, so, you know. They call you, huh? Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes it's really weird, too, because, like, Funimation now is just like we put out a show where everybody knows what they're doing. They, they, I think they put too much faith in our abilities. Like sometimes they won't even tell you that you're cast as the lead in a show. I was asked to come in to record one day and I show up for Joel uh, McDonald and uh, I said, so what are we doing? You know, and he goes, oh, you're you're playing a uh, Koro Sensei in Assassination Classroom. And I went, the lead? <laughs> he goes, yeah. So we're just going to go? I mean, you could have told me that last week and I could have like watched it, you know, and got familiar with it. The only thing I knew was that there was a show about this tentacled teacher and his name was Koro Sensei, but I didn't know anything about any of the episodes. I hadn't seen any of the Japanese yet. So it was kind of frustrating, but we did okay with it. And I think 
on the first episode, I kind of figured out who he was anyway. I was like, I get this guy. <laughs> and it's weird too. It's like when I started doing his voice was also the same week I started teaching myself. I became a teacher the same time I started playing a teacher. Although I played a lot of teachers at Funimation. I usually play dads or teachers. If they just need a bit part, they could bring in for a dad or a teacher or something weird. They'll bring me in for that too. <laughs> Who does weird, Sonny? <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's talk about more of your voice acting classes that you got going on right now. Okay. Um, just kind of get more in depth on that for everyone. Well, knows. about um, three years ago, I started these workshops uh, just teaching out of little storefronts, you know, that I'd rent from the, the people at the store for just for the classes. And um, they started getting really popular. What I would do, I brought in a Funimation engineer, uh, my friend Neil Malley, and we would record stuff that people did in class. And then once they finished, we would per, we would get together and edit the recordings and make a demo for them. So they'd have a professional demo with their training. And we started seeing that a lot of people started getting work from these demos and way more than I thought. I thought if we teach four classes a year, we may get one student a year who can get work. Um, but it turns out it's like 20% of every class has been getting work. So it kept growing and finally I said, you know what, I'm going to get my own studio space. So I got my own studio space in, in Denton and uh, we, every other, well, every month I teach a class. Uh, I teach the basic one every other month and my advanced one every other month. And I have other teachers come in, other voice actors. Uh, uh, J. Michael Tatum's taught there. Tia Ballard's taught there. Uh, Felicia Angel. Um, Chuck Huber's taught there. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. It's good training. Two of my students this last year were nominated for Best New Voice Actors from Behind the Voice Actors. Who's that? Um, oh, God, what are their names? <laughs> you would ask that. What's, huh? I've taught 300 children so far. Children, they're all in their 20s, but to me, that's children. Um, yeah, it'll come to me in a minute. And I, now I'm blanking on it once the red comes out of my face for forgetting their names. <laughs> you'll uh, see it on Twitter soon. So we'll Yeah, <laughs> you'll see, I've already tweeted about it. Um, Christy Rothrock, that was her name. And who's the guy? James. Oh, I feel bad. I can't remember the kid's name. Anyway, we'll come back to They're it. great. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Christy Rothrock was amazing. I, just, I brought her in. I, I don't, even when I'm directing, I'm not going to bring in one of my students because I think it's kind of nepotism. But what I will bring them in is for bit parts. And then I will take them around to other directors. And if they can show their stuff to the other directors, they can make their own career that way, you know. And sometimes I would, they'll ask me who in my class do I think is good, and I'll recommend people to, to work. But a lot of these people are getting work on their own, you know, without any sort of recommendation or anything. Uh, any other questions? Yes. What is Principal Nezu? What is he? Mm -hmm. I can't tell you. <laughs> yeah. He is a rogue. No, he isn't. Right. It's Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> exactly, eroded. Yeah. You're, right. You're right. I'm going to ask a very controversial question. What's your opinions on Mr. Aizawa, ex President Mike? Like, ship them with each other. <laughs> I'm contractually not allowed to ship anyone. Well, that's good. Boy. Except maybe Chris Sabat and Sean Chen. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Yes. <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah i was just like this is so sweet i don't have to because um you know we it takes a lot of skill to match the mouth flaps and talk with them and sound natural uh but after a while it becomes second nature right but this character he had no mouth flaps at all generally so it was like i could do whatever i wanted i could deliver it any way i wanted to and so yeah you get to hear me at my purest with that character um but I mean, we still listen to the Japanese first to get the idea of their uh, intonation and what they're trying to say with it and everything. But uh, yeah, it's it was really cool. And then after that, I started getting all these other little parts here and there with characters that don't have mouth flaps. And I thought, 
are they just doing this to be nice to me? Because I've got, like I play, um, oh, what is that egg in School by Rock? Maple. Have you seen School by Rock? No? Oh, it's a good show. It's just his egg, but he has a mustache that occasionally moves. He has no mouth flaps. And I've played like dozens of characters now. It's like every show with no mouth flaps that call me. I can match mouth flaps. I've been doing it for 20 years. <laughs> but, I, I, but I'd rather not. Uh, any other questions? Yes, in the back. Yes, uh, where, what are the challenges besides loving? How you feel at the convention? This is my first. Oh, really? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been all over the world. Uh, I've been to uh, Australia and New Zealand. I've been to every state in the United States except for Hawaii. Huh? Louisiana. I've been to Louisiana. I just haven't been to New Orleans. Um, yeah, I went with you to I went with you to New or to to Louisiana. Right, that's my wife. Um, and um, where? Oh, I've been to England. I've been to England three times. I'm going to go again this year. Uh, so I've been all over the place. That's one of the great things about this job is that it takes you all over the world, the English speaking world anyway. They don't care about us in Japan, you know. Although I did get an invite to a Japanese convention, but I had to turn it down. Uh, any other? Yes, but it was an American Navy base. That's why we were going to Japan. Oh, uh, what is it? That's it. Okay. Okay. Is it near Tokyo? No, it's really far away from Tokyo. Yeah, that's why I didn't go. <laughs> It's very cold up there. Yeah, I guess it is kind of north, isn't it? Uh, any other questions? Um, yes. I think that you might like to know. What? What part would you, after your career is over, what part do you want to be remembered as? Oh, that is a good question. Well, that is a fire alarm. <laughs> is that a smoke alarm? Fire alarm. Fire alarm? Also alarm. It stops oh, alarm. As long as it stops, we're Did good. Someone kill someone. That's happening. Fire dragon. What is it? It's all. It's all his fault. He went fire. No con staff coming in to tell us what's going on. Yeah. I like to be remembered for this panel that we all died in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We went. The panel went up in flames. Nice to meet you, Sonny was last seen taking his prints and covering his body as kindling on him. The, the new Yamcha. Uh, <laughs> I would like to be remembered for several roles, uh, but I, I would love to be remembered for Krillin and Bardock. Uh, uh, in Koro Sensei, I think it was a really good performance. Um, yeah, Maze Hughes, too. That was, a, that was an important one to be remembered by. Um, let's see. It. Anyone else want to have a question? You asked a lot of questions. Anybody else? <laughs> yes. Can we expect to see an English adaptation of a movie or an IP? Oh, I'd love that. But I don't know. We haven't been told yet. You know, that was a show. Um, I saw that. I, I was told by, by one of the producers, uh, he said, I, he said, well, your show is about a couple of guys uh, who uh, are ice skaters, and they fall in love. I went, what? <laughs> and then I, I, and I said, is it, is it a, a big rating show? And he goes, no, nah, it's not a big rating show. And I said, oh, okay. And then I, I checked out. I said, well, I better research this. And I saw the preview where there's skate, ice skating, you know, and it's like all done in rotoscope. It's beautiful animation. And I went, this is going to be a good show. I can tell by the attention to detail they put into just this this uh, promo, and then I started reading more about it. And I went, "This is going to be a really good show." And then I got the first episode, and I went, "This is so well written." And uh, we had our first directors meeting of that season, and they place shows in uh, in importance for that season, right? And this show is ranked sixteen out of twenty. And I said, um, "I'm telling you guys right now, this show is going to be near the top." And they're like, whatever. And I went, no, this is a really good show. And it's well-written. And I really made sure that the cast is top-notch for this. 
this is going to be good. And every week it was fighting for the top three positions every week. And they finally had to say, you were right. I said, I know this. I've been doing this 20 years. I know when a good show comes along. And this was, that was my absolute favorite thing to direct. It was amazing. I would go more into it, but this is a family friendly panel. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Yes. Oh, that's a good question, isn't it? I like my favorite. Is the blank one? Or, you know, sometimes adults need private time or whatever it was. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Uh, were there any emotional attachments from you from characters that you played that had like tragic endings? You know, like main team or even Koro Sensei? Yeah. Um, all of them that died, you know, even Krillin, you know, like, especially when he comes back. Right. But the thing is like, like Krillin, like when uh, he's turned into chocolate, you know, but you remember what happened just before that? He knew he was going to die. He was just going to try to buy his friends and family a few more seconds to get indoors. Right. And to me, that was like the bravest thing Krillin's ever done. And Krillin is the definition of courage, you know, like, Courage is not being without fear. It's being afraid and doing what you got to do anyway. And that's Krillin. Um, Mace Hughes was great. When he died, I loved it. <laughs> uh, Mike McFarland, who was the director, gave me the uh, the original the episode to watch a week beforehand, which we don't usually get. We usually just go in cold. But he said, this is a very important episode. I want you to know what's going on. And I said, oh, okay, cool. And then he died. And then I was sad because that was such a great character, you know, to lose such a great character. And then he told me, he saw me in the hallway, he said, hey, guess what? They, your character died on TV last night. I went, great. He goes, well, does that make you sad? And I said, yeah. He goes, well, I'm going to show you something that's going to cheer you up. And he showed me all the websites where people were crying because Hughes died last night. And I said, oh, yes. <laughs> that's good. I made the nation cry. Um, Bardock in this movie is very special to me. I'm not going to go into details about it. But um, his relationship to Goku and stuff and doing whatever he can for him, I took that directly from my relationship with my grandson. So yeah, that was very, very touching to me. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Is there an English dub of the assassination classroom movie? Because I can't find one. Not yet. Mm, I've been waiting two years. Me? I've been waiting longer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, no <laughs> any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, I love the moment when he had that giant picture of her, and he's like, don't fall on daddy! And I loved when he called Roy. Anytime he called Roy, I just love that. You know, hey, Roy, it's you. How you doing? Hey, listen, I was out at the beach with my daughter, Alicia, the other week, and I, and I was taking pictures of her in her bikini. Now, I know she's a little young for a bikini, but oh my God, she was so adorable. Now, listen, buddy, you need to get yourself a wife, because if you got yourself a wife, you can have a child. If you had a child, you can take pictures of your child, and we can use them like trading cards and trade them back and forth. Get yourself a wife, okay? So yeah, I love those things. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. So you went to two separate premieres. We're not talking about the movie, but I want yeah. to talk about the premiere experience. Yeah. You uh, you went to LA. Yeah. You got to spend time with a lot of awesome people. Some of my friends, uh, Danny, Geekdom One Hundred One. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. All of them. Um, and then you went to Dallas and did mm -hmm. the premiere there. How was it seeing Dallas Cowboy players? That was amazing. And, and, you know, just the community come together for this major. Yeah, there's, there's Dallas Cowboy players who were fans of Dragon Ball were there at the, the show. And then it turned out they were fans of mine. I got my picture taken with them, and it was cool. And um, my daughter said that her uh, her hairstylist saw the picture of me with the Cowboys and said, next time he's with the Cowboys, tell him he needs to get their autograph. And I said, uh, she needs to read that again. I said, they're fans of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, the, the LA premiere was awesome. It was, uh, ever, all, all of my lifetime, I've heard of Gromit's Chinese theater, you know, and the red carpet that you walk in this, to see these movie premieres, but I never thought I would be on that carpet. Why would I, even as a voice actor, I never thought I would be on that carpet. Why? You know? And yet here I was walking the red carpet at Gromit's Chinese theater. It was very surreal. It was beautiful too. They had a I great sound the system there. Yeah. I've seen all the interviews and stuff and it looked amazing. 
Yeah, it was really cool. And it was cool just to be in Hollywood. Holly weird. <laughs> and it is weird, too. Get you a star. This is bizarre. Yeah. Um, there's a character on, um, his name is Zinjuro, and he was on a show called, uh, oh, what was that? Sana. I can't remember the name of the show. It's been a long time ago, but it was a really cool show. Laura Bailey played the lead in it. I'll remember it later. But anyway, it was a, it was a great character. He was a bit buck teeth, so he, he would talk like this. And he would like, shut up, pay attention to me, I'm talking to you. And I just, I just love that character. He was funny, and they let me ad lib a lot. So it was a lot of funny uh, improvising I did on it. Um, but that show doesn't get much much play. Uh, what else? Well, Show by Rock, when I played that egg, that's a show that people should check out. That's a good show. And on the end of it, they have this egg character talking to another character in the show. And it was always something really weird and surreal. So I would just make up stuff for it. Like I was writing a comic strip at the end of every show. And Caitlin Glass just said, go with it. Do whatever you want. So every show, it's just me adding a, a punchline to the end of the show that I wrote in on the fly in the booth. Uh, yeah. I can't remember any of them. I don't remember anything funny I ever said. So if you guys, if I say anything funny, please remember it because I won't remember it. Yeah, quote me on that. We all have a little fur inside of us. Oh, that's already. Yeah, I, I would, if you had told me that, like, what was the funniest thing you said about that? Or even if you said about furries, I would never remember that. We all have a little furry inside of us. Oh, it's on Twitter already. So. It, oh, that's good. <laughs> I, I already shared it. It's on Twitter. Oh no, and you are all complicit. <laughs> Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Is there any uh, fan interaction that sticks out to you? Yeah. Um, when I was in uh, Florida, uh, in Orlando, and there was this convention. It was in a big hotel, and it was, it was like a resort. And I was walking around the resort after hours, and I was walking by the swimming pool. This lovely young lady uh, in a bikini said, oh, you're Maze Hughes. And I said, yes, I am. And she flashed me. <laughs> I was like, um, "Where's the bleach?" I'm sorry, um, I didn't catch that. And she, <laughs> and she did it again. And her friend was next to her in the pool, and he was like this. <gasps> and I said, "You've never seen this side of your friend before, have you?" And he goes, <laughs> and "I said, son, you owe me." <laughs> uh, any other questions about uh, naked fans? No. Okay. All right. Well, that's it. I'm leaving. Okay. I'll tell you what we could do. Um, it And I will, we'll keep asking questions, too. But for coming to the panel, I think I've got enough prints. I'll just give you all a free print. How's that? Nice. Okay. Oh, my God. Yes. If I run out, just follow me to the uh, table in the dealer's room. I have more at the table. Yeah. Don't tell anybody. Yeah. On camera. Oh, the most emotional I ever got for any character was for Usa. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Once it's an accident, twice it's on fire. <laughs> I think if it was a fire, we would have known because it was 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Literally um, 20 minutes ago. So it. It's over a, it. It was, oh, yeah, it was a small fire. Uh, but the, the, do you remember the scene where he gets the money stolen from him and he's all beaten and everything and he's crying and angry at himself all at the same time? Uh, when I was recording that, I was actually crying for him. I, I had tears come on my face and it has never happened before. And I never thought out of all the plays I've been in since 1979 and all the shows I've been on that this character that looks like a goofy clown would be the one that would move me to tears. That that, he was the one, yeah. Usually they go run screaming. <laughs> uh, oh, not really no. crying. Uh, any other questions? Jays? How did you miss Napa with your scatter time and a half? How did, did I miss him? Yeah. You know, because Curlin really needs to practice his throwing moves. Like his destructo disc, honestly, 
Krillin would just, the Dragon Ball saga would have not lasted nearly as long if Krillin could aim properly. <laughs> right? He, we already saw that he could cut Freeze's tail off, right? If he aimed for this area, there'd be no more saga. That would be the end of it. And then Krillin, everybody would like, Goku would be, wow, Krillin, you're a badass, you should lead! You know, and then Krillin would be the leader of the group. And that'd no be Super it. Saiyan, there's so much stuff that could happen. It's like a waste of time. This is a Destructo disc. He needs a solar flare, blind him, Destructo disc follow, bam, bam. That's the end of it. That's the end of every villain. Oh, Pete. But no, no, he doesn't practice. He, this is, this is a, all of you who are, are, are musicians or you're trying to learn some skill, practice because it will pays off. Otherwise, people are going to treat you like Krillin. <laughs> Paint dots on your head. Losers. <laughs> yeah. My favorite move from Dragon Ball Z is the Destructo disc. Yeah, it's a pretty cool move, right? And it is because the difference in power level from him to Frieza, and he was still able to cut off Frieza's tail. Like, I just think that if Krillin did do what you said, mm -hmm. then he could be one of the most powerful fighters. Well, look at it this world. way. Out of all the... the people that, that Frieza's run into in his whole career, the first person to draw blood was Krillin. Yep. No one else could scratch him. <laughs> Big facts. Right. Big facts. Yeah. Also, Krillin now, if you've seen Super, you know, he just recently defeated somebody that defeated Android 18. And we know Android 18 could beat Super Saiyan 1 easy. So that means Krillin is on a skill level of Super Saiyan 1 now. Yes, I get well equivalent to Super Saiyan One, which is which is superhuman as far as you can go, because no one has got that. that How did they put Frieza's tail back on? Mecha Frieza, I don't know. Mecha Frieza, I don't know. <laughs> they did do a Mecha Frieza. Yeah, but remember I don't know. they put I, him I don't together. Know if his tail was from that, or did he get his tail back? I don't remember if Mecha Frieza got his tail back. He had his tail because. Uh, well, I know when he was wish back, he got everything. back. He's kind of a he's, he's a space he's the Geico lizard. gecko. Yeah, that was before. He's like a space. He started out on Geico and then uh, got into. Uh, and then he was too violent. He had to stop killing all the Grand Canyons and people. No, no, he was the guy. He did so far. He got you today, or else someone blow up the planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, so I asked this earlier to uh, Elise and Rick. Um, yeah. Besides your character in, in Dragon Ball. Who is your favorite character that you don't play? Uh, oh, my favorite character in Dragon Ball that Total? You don't play? Yeah. Uh, it has to be Vegeta. Awesome. Yeah, Good answer. I love Vegeta. I, I Zach, love his story that? arc. I love that he he's a bad guy that kind of begrudgingly becomes a good guy, the but he still really him. hates it. Right. You know, but he knows he has to now. He got robbed. Yeah, he did. He's so, supposed, to, he's supposed to be a king. You know, now he's king of what? Three people? You know what I mean? King of mine. Okay, okay, but one of them. Okay, see, I can't spoil it. Yeah, don't spoil it. Yeah, don't spoil it. Uh, any other questions? I just noticed I was on camera this whole time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is, is everything straight? You're, you're actually live streaming. In oh, cool. Oh. Live streaming. Hi, everyone. What's going on? Any questions person, from the live stream? One, one no? no. We do chat. have a question? No chat. No, not chat right now. No chat. Okay, well, shut up. <laughs> Start talking. It made me feel like I was born to make history. <laughs> and you hear my heartbeat, tired of feeling I'm never enough. I close my eyes and tell myself that my dreams will come true. You know what? When I, I, when I do uh, editing on, uh, after we record, we have to go into the editing booth and, and listen to every line over and over again to make sure we don't want to change it or if I think that the, the mix is wrong or whatever. Um, I never listen to the uh, the theme song, right? Except on that show, and I listened to it every time. And I would dance in the room while I was listening to it because I knew how cool the show was. And I was just like, <laughs> and I could hear me singing from outside the booth. I love that show. It was a good show. Uh, any other questions? No. Okay. What? Come on. All right, you get to ask then. All right. Um, 
So if anybody hasn't finished this assassination classroom, this might be a huge spoiler. So like he dies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just died. Um, he died. Like, were you? Oh, no, did no. you? How sad were you when he died? Because he was so. It was funny. really sad. I really hated to see that character go. But then they brought him back for that uh, the Koro Sensei Adventures, you know, with the. Uh, oh yeah, that was good. I'm glad that was cute too. That. It was like, oh, good, I get to play him a little bit more. <laughs> but that series was just so fun. Yeah. They started off with a comedy and so it became depressing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, Whoa, yeah, the pumped. I like that he gives people makeovers as punishment. <laughs> Karma. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Uh, I first started directing back in 2002. Um, I just come off of a tour. I drove this Dragon Ball Z Hummer across the United States, and I just finished drawing uh, Elf Quest, a uh, comic book series in California, but I was flying back once a month to record his Krillin. Um, and then Chris Sabat called me and he said, We have these uh, movies coming up there uh, called Loop on the Third. And um, he says, If you come back to Dallas, and, and live, you know, after your tour, uh, I will cast you in the lead of this because I think you'd be perfect for it. So I came back, I played Lupin, and he said, uh, "Man, you really seem to have a hold on this character. Um, would you be interested in directing the rest of the movies? Because we had like nine of them." And I went, "Yeah, I'd love to." And I had directed in theater, but I never directed uh, anime before. So that's how I got my start. I did nine of those movies, but by then there were me. I think it was me, Sabat, and Mike McFarland were the only directors. And so we were directing everything. Like I directed a lot of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z and some Case Closed and whatever else was going on at that time. Um, but that's how I got into it. And I did that for about three years. And then I got a, another comic book series published from Tokyo Pop. So I gave up directing for that. And then uh, Funimation about four years ago uh, asked me if I would come back and direct again. And I said, sure. So I directed for them another three years. And now I'm working on another comic book series. So, but comics, anime, comics, anime, comics, anime. That's my life. Any other questions? Yes? The door walked open and in came an Fig Newton. What's up? Hello. Hello. It's good to see you. Oh, very good. Uh, what is your question? Did you no? Yes, Blondie. Sorry, uh, oh, because of Mario. Blondie. Right. <laughs> Damn you, Mario. <laughs> Any question. other questions? Yes. Oh, Battleborn is great. Yeah, I play uh, this weird little bird character, Benedict. Huh? Benedict. Yes, his name is Benedict, and they wanted me to sound like um, oh, what's the guy's name? All right, all right, all right, Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. And what I gave them though was Robert Strait, my brother. Because my brother has a real thick Texas accent like this, and sometimes he gets really upset. And when he gets upset, this is the way he talks. And I was like, oh man, that's great. Because they wanted some badass guy. My brother's a badass too. He's a biker. He's got a beard down to here, you know. And so I just based the whole character on him. And uh, I was telling those guys about it. They said, "Man, that's great." And it doesn't sound as much like Matthew McConaughey. I said, "It's not at all. I'm doing my brother." He says, "Your brother?" Yeah, that's my brother Robert. And they said, "He sounds like a cool guy." <laughs> yeah, he is a pretty cool guy. So that was a blast. I love working on video games. The cool thing about video games is that. You generally can just do whatever you want, you know, as long as they like it, you know. And um, with him, they they actually he was a minor character, and then they brought him back and kept giving him more and more lines because they liked what I was doing with it. Yeah, and I guess since, like you said, this is kind of family oriented. There's one line in particular that I just really liked that cracked, cracked me up every time I heard it. Cracked you up like an egg? What are you saying, boy? <laughs> He, he hates any reference to being a bird. Yeah. Well, unless it's bird of prey. Your face is a flag circle. <laughs> There's, you can actually um, go onto YouTube 
and look up Battleborn Benedict lines and you get all of the lines on there. Yeah, one of my favorites was uh, Black Hand Under the Tree. Try, but tried his best on that guy's tombstone. <laughs> you know. But tried his best on his tombstone. <laughs> yeah, I love that line. Uh, there's also, I played like most of the psychos from Borderlands. Uh, so if you go to uh, look up, look up uh, on YouTube, Borderlands Psychos, there's two. There's me and some other guy. I don't know who the other guy was. It kind of sounds like Chris Casey. Um, but you can hear all of my lines that I did on that too. All right. We have one more question, and then I'm going to start signing these things for you guys. Yeah. Out of all the Dragon Ball movies, which was your favorite? The last one, by far. I saw the first two, and I thought they were really good. But this blows them away. Like Who's seen it? Who's seen the movie? Do you agree? Oh my god! Does anyone gosh. disagree, yeah. guys? This that movie it. it is the most Dragon Ball movie ever made. Yeah. It's more Dragon Ball than any Dragon Ball TV show or anything you've ever like seen. Not including that movie, the old ones. Um, I liked Resurrection F. I thought that was cool. Yeah, I would put Resurrection F second, but not a close second, <laughs> but definitely second. Yeah. I remember my thing now. Uh, in Dragon Ball vs. Series, what was your favorite Owen moment? I'm not going to give it to him. I'm not going to give it to him. <laughs> F those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Team Four Star. Probably gonna Bastards. Probably going to watch this and be like crying for the next three Although, hours. Although, you know what I did like? Is when they had the own count go in reverse oh. when he was uh, with Android 18, <laughs> alone with 18. <laughs> Suddenly it's like dee, 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 to zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, thank you so much for coming to the panel. If you want a free uh, thing, just come up here and I'll sign it for you. Uh, otherwise, thanks again.